Hello everyone and welcome to the default scene. My name is Jacob and today we will be going over how to create a Brooklyn Nine-Nine style intro using Blender and GIMP. The footage that I am using in this tutorial is from Pexels. You can download it from the link in the description below. So let's jump into it. If you want to skip over me breaking down the clip that we are copying and go straight to how I made it, then go ahead and check the timeline and skip to the chapter that you need. I took the liberty of grabbing my favorite actor from Brooklyn Nine-Nine's intro sequence. I've watched this short clip several times, and you can see that as I am looking through the clip, I am making small notes. Specifically, I'm making notes on the duration of the clip in frames, I'm making notes on the amount of frames that are used for the video, the amount of frames that are used for the still frame, and the amount of frames that are used for the animation of the text. There is a 20 frame section of video, then there is a 35 frame section of still frame. The top text takes 5 frames to animate in, and the bottom text takes 9 frames. The other thing that I did was I just looked and made sure that I had all of the elements in place. For one thing, the freeze frame zooms in on the character, then the background has a color overlay, and in front of the character there is a color gradient. Now that I've identified all the factors of the scene, let's go ahead and start making it. First open up a new video editing workspace. Add in the clip that you want to use. The clip that I am using has been slowed down. I can tell that it has a frame rate of 25 frames per second because Blender automatically changes the frame rate to 25 frames per second. But since it seems slow, I'm guessing this was filmed at 50 frames per second. To fix this, I'll select my video strip and hit Shift A to add in a speed control strip. Then in the speed control strip settings, I'll untick stretch to strip length and change the speed factor to 2. I can also delete the audio because I don't need that. Now the clip plays back at the right speed. Next I'm going to navigate to the frame that I want to freeze on. For me I found this frame here where the actor is smiling. I'm going to hit F12 in order to render out a frame and save that somewhere on my hard drive. Before I do anything else I'm going to go 20 frames back from my freeze frame and set that frame as my start frame. Boy, You can easily do this by clicking in the timeline frame box and hit the subtract button and then type in 20 and hit enter. Then since I know that the whole clip duration is going to be 50 55 frames, I'll change my end frame to 55 frames past my start frame. Okay, now that that's done, go into your photo editor of choice. I'll be using GIMP. I need to go ahead and take my freeze frame and add a colored background to it. I'm doing this in GIMP because it's much easier than doing it in Blender. The first thing that I do is go ahead and duplicate my freeze frame. Then I invert the colors and using the levels color adjustment, I'm able to go ahead and make sure that the hair of the actor is almost completely white. Then I use a brush with a hardness of 50% and I paint white over all of the black holes within the actor's hair. Finally, I use the quick select tool in order to select around my actor and fill in all of the background with black. Then I can invert that selection and using the subtract selection method, I can go ahead and augment my selection so that I can fill in white for the actor. Now that I have this black and white layer, I can create a new layer and fill it with any color I wish. For now, I'm going to fill it with this dark green. Then I'll add an image mask to the color layer that I just created. And with my black and white layer selected, I'll hit Control A to select everything and then Control C. Next, I'll select the mask of the color layer that I just created and hit Control V in order to paste that black and white layer onto the mask. I ran into a little problem because the actor is white and so the green of my color layer will only show up where the actor is. That's okay. Just hit Control Z to go backward and then go ahead and select the black and white layer and go to color and invert. Now, repeat the process and you can see that we've added in a green background around our character. Next I can play with the opacity to make it as opaque as I want. Finally I'm going to duplicate my color layer and then with that new color layers image mask selected I'm going to add in a gradient. I found that it was best to add in a gradient that went across the entire image. Next I went ahead and I put the first color layer and my image into a group so that I could change their scale without the masks getting messed up. Once I found a good composition, then I added my second color layer that has the gradient mask into its own group, and then I moved that down accordingly. Okay, now if you're happy with your image, go ahead and export that out, and then let's jump back into Blender. The first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and make sure the playhead 
is on the frame that I want my freeze frame to start. Then I'll hit Shift A and add in the new image that we just created. I just need to make sure that that image is on top of my other video strips. And then I also need to extend the duration of that image out to the end frame. Now if I play through, you can see that we get that pop. Finally, we just have to go ahead and add in our text. Go up to the scene menu and create a new scene. Just click copy settings. Now create a new layout workspace and add in a camera. Clear the camera's rotation, rotate it 90 degrees along the X axis, and pull it back in space. With that done, go ahead and create some text. The official Brooklyn Nine-Nine Twitter said that they used Garamond as the font for the intro but I don't have that text, so I'm just gonna use Arial Bold. Go ahead and add in some interesting text. For me, I'm gonna use the top text, I'm going to type the guy, and then I'm going to Shift D duplicate that text and bring it down, and then type with the smile. Now that I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm going to select my camera and go ahead and put the freeze frame as the background to my camera. Once I'm satisfied with my settings for my text, I'm going to go ahead and create a plane. Go ahead and rotate the plane 90 degrees along the x-axis and then scale it and place it accordingly so that it covers all of the bottom text and about half of the top text. Last but not least, make sure that your plane is behind your text, otherwise you'll run into problems. Now I'm going to add shaders. For the plane, I'm going to add in a green emission shader. I'll jump back into GIMP in order to grab the hex code for the exact green that I used for the background of our still frame. And for our two text objects, I'll go ahead and add a white emission shader. Now I'll jump back into our video editing scene and make sure that our playhead is still at the start of our freeze frame. Then I'll jump back into the text scene. Next, I'll go five frames forward from where my freeze frame starts and add in a keyframe for the top text. And then I'll go ahead and parent the bottom text to my plane and then move four frames forward and add in a keyframe for my bottom text. This way, my end frames are all done. Now I can go back to the start frame of my freeze frame and I can focus on placing everything out of the camera shot. Once everything is out of the camera shot in the correct in the correct place, I can go ahead and add in new keyframes. One thing I want to note is the top text actually comes from behind the camera. This is something I forgot to say when I was going over the scene elements. Finally, I'm just going to jump into the curve editor and make sure that I like the curves. You can see that I'm making sure that everything is a Bezier curve, and then I'm grabbing all of the start points of the curves and hitting S, X, and zero to, in order to zero out any sort of easing in because we don't need that. Then I'm scaling the end frames by selecting all of the end frames, hitting S and X, and then pulling my mouse away from the control points. This is going to give my animation a very organic and lively feel. I'll do that for both the top and the bottom text. In my text scene, I'll head over to the render properties. Under the film tab, I'm going to make sure that transparent is checked on. And while I'm here, I'm going to check on motion blur and screen space reflections. I'm also going to go down to the color management drop down menu and make sure that my color space is set to standard and not filmic. Now I'll head back to my video editing scene and put the playhead at the starting frame of my entire shot. I'll hit shift A and add in my text scene and place it above all of the other scene strips. Then I'll head over to the strip properties and under the compositing drop down menu, I'll change the blend mode to alpha over. Next, scroll through your scene and see how it looks and maybe do a sample render. After rendering everything out, I noticed that I didn't like the green of our plane. So I headed back into the text scene and changed the green of the plane to a darker green. Finally, let's go ahead and render out our shot. In the output settings, I'm going to use the FFmpeg output with the MP4 container and the high output quality. I don't have to select audio, but if I did, I would select the AAC audio encoder. And there you have it. A simple and easy and visually accurate recreation of the Brooklyn Nine-Nine intro. Just repeat this process for five more characters and add some music with great trumpet solos and you can have an amazing intro sequence. Anyway, I hope that this has been helpful for all of you. Please stay safe out there and I will see you next time.